started. So we are going to talk today about chest pain. And let's get started with the case of a 55-year-old man who comes to the hospital with chest pain for one hour. We do our systematic approach to the patient with our initial assessment. So our general impression, level of consciousness, the patient is alert, he is speaking, his lungs are clear, but his radial pulse is weak. What should we do next? Of course, we are going to think this patient may be sick, so we're going to evaluate, think, and act at the same time. And that means we're going to do our immediate interventions such as oxygen and monitoring. monitor. We look at the cardiac monitor and we see this rhythm strip. And after the ECG lecture, I'm sure you all recognize that this is a uh, probably sinus rhythm, narrow complex, normal ST segments. We get vital signs on the patient also, and his heart rate is 65. His blood pressure is a little bit low, of 100 systolic, and his breathing is okay. We are able to get an ECG at our hospital and we get one done. And then we interpret it and just the brief interpretation is that the ECG looks okay. So we go on and do our history using our sample history. And for our symptoms, we use our OPQRSTU approach. And the patient states that he's had pain for one hour. The pain is like heaviness, it is severe, and he has lots of other symptoms. The pain goes to his jaw and his arm. He is sweaty, short of breath, nauseous, and dizzy. Now, 
The, re the remainder or rest of his sample history is only remarkable for high blood pressure. We do our uh, physical exam. The patient is in a little bit of distress due to pain. And his lungs are clear, and the only other remarkable finding is that his radio pulse is a little bit weak to, to normal, and he is sweaty. So then we're thinking, what is the cause of this patient's chest pain? And when we think about the causes of chest pain, it's easiest to think about what is in the chest. So we use our anatomy to determine what could be causing the pain. So in the chest we have the heart, so the heart could be causing the pain. We have the major blood vessels like the aorta. We have the muscles and bones. The esophagus and GI system. The upper abdomen actually can cause pain by touching and irritating the diaphragm. And then lastly, the majority of the chest is made up of the lungs. So problems with the lungs can cause chest pain, obviously, as well. So this is a long list to remember, so I like to break it up based on the anatomy to help us remember what we should be thinking about when a patient comes in with chest pain. We are going to focus on or talk about mostly the most common and most critical causes of chest pain, which include things with the heart, the blood vessels, and the lungs. Now, talking about heart disease and the focusing on the heart, Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in the world, in Asia, and in the United States. So when we talk about cardiovascular disease, or more specifically, heart disease, we often use the terms ischemia and infarction. So ischemia is when there is not enough blood flow for the muscles. So something, in this case, plaque, is limiting the blood as it goes through the blood vessel. Now in infarction, there is oftentimes a blood clot that forms with platelets. 
Completely blocking the blood flow. So because there is little or no blood flowing to the muscle, the muscle dies and we call that infarction. Now there are some conditions which put you at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease and specifically disease of the coronary arteries. These are not in a, this is not an inclusive list, but the the classic or common ones people talk about are smoking, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and early family history. Acute coronary syndrome is often called ACS. Acute coronary syndrome ACS. And acute coronary syndrome is made up of two conditions. Acute, meaning new. Acute myocardial infarction, new heart attack. Acute myocardial infarction, man, I have chika, chingu bed do da ka lang flim flim. And unstable angina. Nung ka chu trung da man man mien stay the peep. Unstable angina is often a term meaning new ischemia. And if unstable angina is left, oftentimes without treatment, oftentimes patients will progress to infarction. Now, acute myocardial infarction, we often divide into two groups. Those that have a myocardial infarction that shows ST elevation on the ECG. And the second group is those that have a myocardial infarction but do not have ST elevation on the ECG. So let's take a moment and ask ourselves a question about patients with myocardial infarctions. True or false, all patients having an acute myocardial infarction will have chest pain. The answer is false. Up to 20% of patients will have no chest pain when they have their heart attack. In fact, in patients over 70 years old, over half of them will not have chest pain when they have a heart attack. So it's very important to think about 
acute coronary syndrome or heart attack when you see patients with symptoms that are not chest pain but could be related chúng dương trực kết ở bàn đợt đó làm pi chấm ngư sờ sai xiêm corona nâng chấm ngư kẹn bẹ đùng these symptoms would be things like shortness of breath nausea dizziness um, sweatiness chấn rục sinh nhà tiếng ồn ú ai cả miền láng đôi chia cả chẳng áo cả bay như sét cả thấp lòng hàm also upper abdominal pain and left or right arm pain that is not related to the muscles or bones hay chỉ tu tới miền ca chư pu này khang lơ rồi có chư đái đòi mình tiệt tôn tới năng chấm ngứ chăng sạch đồng tỷ all right so what are we going to do then for our patients when we think they might be having a heart attack or acute coronary syndrome chúng ta dương thời thưa giang mấy chấm pu này chấm ngứ đại miền acute myor infection rồi có acute coronary syndrome the two things that almost all patients should get or at least most patients should get is aspirin and we give at least 325 milligrams to most patients. Chúng chỉ tu tới dương miên pi mục đại trâu chỉ ỏi chỉ tu tới cứ aspirin 225 mg. And then oxygen should be given if the patient has symptoms of shortness of breath or has abnormal vital signs such as low oxygen saturation. Hay oxygen chỉ tu tới dương trâu phụ đoal rụp pu nè chỉ ngư hot rư có miên sẩm piet cầm hạp oxygen nó tiệp. Other medications that we can give would be like nitrates which is a vasodilator. Thnam đọt tới tiệt chỉ dương cu ỏ cứ miên pu nitrat đâm bây phụng rích sơ sai chiếm. And we give the vi- this vasodilator to try to see if we can increase the diameter of the artery. Chúng ta ao thân nam phùng rì sai ní, dương cơ thể dương ai phùng rì với chìm miết này sờ sai chiếm. Which would bring more blood to the muscle which needs more blood. Để ai thua ai lùm hồ chiếm ban rò sai chiếm muốn ai nom chiếm tới chìm chấm sạch đông bảy đùng. It's important to remember not to give nitrates to patients if they have had Viagra recently. Bất tài dương trâu chong chăm. Tha mun nưng ỏi nitrat ni, dương trâu kết tha ta nè chỉ ngư nưng miên lệ Viagra thmai thmai ni tê. Or if they have a fast heart rate, a very slow heart rate or a low systolic blood pressure. Rồi có nè chúng ngư đại miên chẳng vạc bệnh đông nhọc bê, rồi có dứt bê, rồi có miên sẵn biệt chiếm tiệp. If nitrates don't help improve the chest pain, or if you cannot give nitrates, you should consider giving another pain medication to help the patient. Hai bà sân chìa dương ôi nitrate hơi, nè ta mình bắt ca chì chạp, dương trở kết đó thân nằm mà bắt ca chì chạp đó tê tiệt. Because the pain itself may be making the heart attack worse. Dương trai trong trăm tha cả nam miền ca chứ hơi mình mình bắt nâng thua ở miền ca kẹn bẹ đầu nó căn tại ngôn ngô lang. So which of these is a life-saving therapy? Which decreases the rate of death in patients with heart attacks? Cáp chia ba tiếng ồn đi. The answer is actually aspirin. So when a patient's having a heart attack, their chance of dying can be decreased by 23% if you just give them an aspirin early on. Tam ca sắc xa bằng hai tha Còn ta ôi aspirin Nhưng nâng ai cạn một thói ca slap Đói kèm bẹ đông ní ban một phê bây phía rồi Other things we're going to do to evaluate the patient Or put them on the cardiac monitor Get an ECG and a chest x-ray 
chúng ca vi đầm lai đầu tây tiết cứ tha dân tự đã cắt dạ monitor thu ở sẽ dễ có thọt suốt thọt trùng Now there are a number of lab tests which you may send in these patients but they may or may not be available at your hospital. The lab test troponin and CKMB are lab tests to look for damage to the heart and heart attack. These are currently not available at most hospitals in Cambodia, but these tests are becoming less expensive and probably will be available soon. The other lab tests, such as a complete blood count, electrolytes like potassium or creatinine, can be used to check for other problems. For example, if the patient has a bad, is very anemic, has a very low hemoglobin, It might be helpful to give them a blood transfusion if they are having a heart attack. But that would only be done if the patient was very anemic, very low hemoglobin. So what then is the next step in managing our patients? We've given the aspirin, he had shortness of breath, so we put him on oxygen. We are worried he might be having acute coronary syndrome, so we're going to admit him to the hospital. We're going to contact the cardiologist if they are available. And if the patient is obviously having a heart attack or very sick, we're going to consider transferring them to a higher level of care. This may or may not be possible at your hospital now. Whether the patient is going to stay at your hospital or go to another hospital, it is important to reassess them. And so we're going to recheck our vital signs again. We're going to recheck the patient's pain level to see if it's come down. And we're going to check them on the cardiac monitor. And if possible, we're going to get another ECG. Because although the first ECG may have been relatively normal, a repeat ECG later may look different. When we are rechecking the patient, he all of a sudden becomes unresponsive. You look up at the monitor and you see that the patient's heart rate is very fast. And because you just did the ECG lecture, you know that that is a wide complex tachycardia. 
bà sân thì dương thưa ơi dưới dưới dương đừng khơi tha nhà chị người miền ca miền ở bệ đông đài nhọp you feel for a pulse and you feel no pulse nhưng ai chạp pu bán rồi mặt bàn so what are you going to do ta dương thật thưa ấy you're going to cardiovert or defibrillate them So, in heart attacks, 90% of the deaths are due to a dysrhythmia or arrhythmia like this. Most of these patients die before they even get to the hospital. And once they have a cardiac arrest, it is very hard to bring them back to life. Even if you have all the fancy equipment, okay, a defibrillator and everything, only a small percentage of people actually can be brought back to life. In the U.S., it is about 5 to 10% of people can be saved from a cardiac arrest if they are in the hospital. However, these patients that have a cardiac arrest when you are watching them is the best chance. So in this case, we defibrillated the patient and because he had had the cardiac arrest right in front of us, we were able to bring him back. We got a repeat ECG on this patient at this time, and what did we see? Correct. I hear people saying ST elevation. So we see the ST segment is up compared to the TP segment or baseline. So we diagnose the patient with the ST elevation, myocardial infarction. So what do we want to do with cases like this? We have to remember that the longer we wait to give them aspirin and to take care of them, the more heart muscle that will die. And we want to admit them to the hospital, or if possible, and if you are not at a hospital with a cardiologist, transfer them to a higher level of care. And in the hospital, there are a number of different things you can do for the patient. We often divide these therapies or treatments into two groups, those that can increase the risk of bleeding and those that do not increase the risk of bleeding. I know that uh, aspirin and I believe heparin are available. 
And if you know the patient is having a heart attack, both should be given. Assume they have no reason not to get them, like having a GI bleed. Nitrates and morphine can be used to decrease the pain the patient is having and thereby decrease the stress on the heart. And beta blockers such as atenolol can be used also in these patients. Beta blockers are helpful in decreasing the stress on the heart and can save lives. But you want to make sure the patient is not having signs of cardiogenic shock when you give the beta blocker. Because the beta blocker can make the cardiogenic shock worse. So in summary, remember that we want to, even if we don't have the final diagnosis with a chest pain patient, we want to start treatment early. We're going to use the anatomy to remember our differential diagnosis. And in that differential diagnosis, we're going to focus on the many uh, causes that can be life-threatening or kill the patient. And finally, remember that if you think it could be a heart attack, early aspirin can save a life. Thank you for your time. Uh, a very special thank you to uh, my colleague for helping me to uh, not only translate but to make the lecture. So a round of applause for Dr. Hoon. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.